What's up, my ninjas? We are back. Today's episode will not be too action-packed because we're going to be focusing on uh, our crew. So first things first, what we're going to do is go talk to our girlfriend and go ahead and get that uh, romance started so it can carry through with us for the next couple games. And, you know, I can satisfy my urge to finally have a romance because I've been fiending to talk to some character in this game and since I had decided it was going to be Liara we might as well get that out the way now okay because that's my beautiful little smurf and can't nobody tell me nothing okay this is waifu right here this is waifu commander what's up boo? are you coming to check up on me <laughs> somebody gonna be coming <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Better. How are you feeling? Doctor Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. Mm -hmm. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. She You're better. in good hands. Doctor Chakwas knows what she's doing. That's right. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. I do want to ask you something. Why are you the only Asari that I've ever seen that has eyebrows? I don't remember whether your mama got them or not, because she got that uh, crown on, but. Sidetrack. Maybe we could pick up where we left off. You were telling me about your interest in the Protheans. Actually, I think I was talking about my interest in you and making a fool of myself in the process. Oh. As I said, I am not used to dealing with people, especially humans. I did not really know much about your species when we first met, Shepard. I found it hard to take humanity seriously. Your kind always seems so rushed and high-strung. It's because we die quick. We don't have the luxury of time. An Asari can live for a thousand years. We're lucky if we hit 150. That is true. At first I thought that was a weakness of your species. After spending time with you and your crew, however, I think it may actually be an advantage. Hmm. You humans are creatures of action. You pursue your goals with an almost indomitable determination. It is an admirable trait, but also an intimidating one. You intimidated by me, baby? You're scared of us? Unfortunately, the rest of the galaxy sees humanity as something of a bully. You run over anyone in your path to get what you want. It is up to people like you to change their minds, Shepard. I'm doing the best I can, Liara. There is a reason the Council chose you to become a Spectre. They saw something special in you. The best of what humanity has to offer. I looked into your history. I know what you did during the Blitz. It was a remarkable display of courage and heroism. You didn't have to look me up behind my back. You didn't need to go behind my back. I would have <laughs> he told you whatever you wanted to know. Why well, he said the same thing. I apologize, Commander. After our last conversation, I was afraid I would say something stupid again. Oh. I wanted to know more about you. I don't to think understand it's stupid. what I made think you into adorable. the man you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. Ooh. Are you sure you're interested in me? Or is it my visions of the Protheans? I admit, your connection to the Protheans had something to do with my initial interest. Mm -hmm. But it has grown beyond that. You intrigue me, Shepard. But I was not sure if it was appropriate to act on my feelings. Ooh. I thought there might already be a relationship between you and Chief Williams. Nope. Williams and I are just friends. Nothing more. My mistake then. I am not as adept at understanding Why would you think human that? relationships as I thought. But what about us, Shepard? Is there a mutual attraction, or was I wrong about that too? Oh no, I'm definitely attracted to you. But what I'll be trying to figure out is how come you thought that? Because I didn't even flirt with Ash in this playthrough. That must be a misstep. No, you were right. There is something between us. I knew it, and I knew you felt it too. But does this not seem rather strange? Why do I feel so close to you? We have only known each other a short time. We are from two different species. We have almost nothing in common. This makes no sense. These things never make sense. They just happen and we get swept up in the storm. You make it sound so chaotic, so dangerous. Mm. I'll keep you safe. Ooh. I am not looking for a protector. This is all a bit overwhelming. I am not used to this. You. I need some time. Uh huh. Take all the time you need, Liara. I'll be here. Thank you, Shepard. Let's 
Let's just talk about something else for now. Okay. You want me to kill the heat? Let's talk about your mom. <laughs> you know why Amnesia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought aligning herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. Hmm. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. Tim Butch culture. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council. And we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Like what? <laughs> Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term. Not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved. But it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits on to our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. Hmm. I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered spaceflight and left our home world. Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pure blood. Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face, it is a great insult among my people. Mm. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. That is so interesting that being a pureblood in this series is actually a bad thing, when traditionally the taboo is not being pure. That's crazy. Maybe she wanted to meet and you, and prolific as hell. Something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. I know. Benezia never spoke. I know exactly who the happened, father is. Too much pain to dwell but on you it. won't learn for another game. Herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. You Asari lived for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Mm -hmm. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. That's dope. I think I learned enough from my girlfriend. Let's go talk to some other people now. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Bye, baby. I'm so excited now that we finally uh, yes, started Commander? that. Is there something you need? Nah, I've learned I enough from you already. Let's go Goodbye, talk to Caden. Caden's boring ass. 
And I know a lot of people are like, Kane's not boring, he's a good character. And that's your opinion. Like they about to square Anything up. Anything you need, Commander? Tell me something about yourself. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Well, they know about the stonewalling you've had from the council. They deserve to know what we're up against. They're on your side. They're Are pissed they? about the resistance we're getting, especially from our side. I'll have a better handle on all of it when my head stops hurting. Oh, no. Flare up. Ever thought about going back under the knife? Maybe get an upgrade? No thanks, Commander. One slip and you can't remember your own name. The L2s spike higher anyway. My abilities would drop with pain-free L3s. Gonna be a cold day before I turn myself over to a Kinetic subsidiary. Hmm. I haven't heard anything about Kinetics in a while. Yeah, they quietly disappeared. Broke up into a bunch of little corps after they'd botched the training on Jump Zero. After first contact, Kinetics was set up to track Element Zero exposures and develop implants for humans. Once we had an embassy on the Citadel, Kinetics could bring in experts instead of taking it slow. Uh huh. I'm sure Kinetics did what they thought was best. It wasn't best for us. They brought in an ex-military Turian named Commander Vernus. A real hard ass. He basically had a free pass to break us if it would turn out a decent biotic. Damn. Kind of spiral from there, Commander. Did he ever face charges for that? He got his, yeah. But like everything else at Jump Zero, it was under the table. The less said, the better. Anyway, this is ancient stuff. I walked it off a long time ago. I should get back to my duties, Commander. We're here to make history, not rehash it. What's your opinion on the last hmm. mission? I'm glad there aren't many aliens like the Thorian. I don't think my stomach could take it. <laughs> One of my cousins has an agribusiness. I was thinking of calling him. Maybe he can get some shipments into Theros. I mean, now that they're cut off from the company. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? So now, I think I get why people like you. Because I'll admit that I didn't uh, put much stock in you, Caden. It's because you're an exposition machine. You give us all the exposition we could possibly need ever. And uh, I appreciate that, you know? All right, so let's see what the good folk downstairs is talking about. And maybe see if that uh, asshole who's selling stuff to me on my own ship might have something better. Ooh, holy low times, Batman. Alright, so who do we holler at first? Do I talk to Garrus? Let's go talk to Ashley. See if she's pissed at um, the fact that I'm flirting with Liara already and that we about to hook up. What's up, Ash? Commander, you have a minute to talk. Ooh. Why am I nervous? I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens. That's the racing. and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? That's racist. They may not serve the Alliance, Chief, but they're allies. At least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We, humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. But we need allies. Standing up for ourselves doesn't mean standing alone. I don't think we should turn down allies. I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As no That's reasonable. Members say now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. Probably. I don't see that as inevitable. Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. 
Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. That I can agree with because that is primarily how humanity feels about the council races. So that's that's fair. But I'm curious as to why you feel that way. You seem like deeply held beliefs, Williams. What made you think this way? My family's defended the Alliance since it was founded. Is that right? My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. Hmm. I do understand, but I don't want to justify your racism. <laughs> I get it. I get the way she feels and I understand, but I am an African American male and so is my character and I just can't in good conscience justify your racism. So All right. I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Torian, I'll ask which cheek. <laughs> cool. I don't think kissing Turians will be necessary. You never know, Commander. You do. You, you never know. You know that Garrus might. What's your opinion on the last just need mission? A kiss on that side of his face is going to disappear. That's about the worst place for a colony I've ever seen. Given the option, I'd get the hell out of Dodge. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, sir. Likewise, I am now. All right, let's talk to the big brute. What's up, Tempin? So, we've got Saren on the run. Hell yeah. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten to the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. Rex, why are you reminding me of that terrible Disney movie? No, Why didn't you tell me this sooner? That damn descendants run to the core. I thought it was important. That's fair. I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. Just the same. This was a while ago. Uh -huh. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the terminus systems. They said it paid well, and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men too, so I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, yeah. looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. Because he's crazy as hell. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Smart guy. Didn't even wait to get paid. <laughs> he said, I didn't even wait to get that That's bread. the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Damn. Every damn one. Yeah, it's cause Saren ain't shit. So long, Rex. Shepard. That was insightful. Mr. Vicarian, over here with this piece of shit, Mako. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, bro. Why did you want to be a CSEC officer in the first place? Hmm. That's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. I dig it. That's tough. But you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a C-Sec man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. 
thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. Mm. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same reasons. No shit. You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate, me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. Damn. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. Oh, so he's one he of those. like you, Commander. No offense. Eh, too bad. Not all Spectres are like Saren, you know. Of course not. But Saren's not going to play by our rules, c sex rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. I agree. I straight up agree. Learner, I can't, uh... We'll beat him at his own game. It's the only way to stop someone like him. I'm right behind you, Commander. Nah, I'll admit, I'm getting more Paragon points than Renegade. See? But, um, I'm giving answers that I would honestly give. I'm not hitting them with shit just to get the points. At least I'm trying not to. And Looking I for just supplies? happen to be a better person than I thought I was. Like a, yeah, you asshole. Let's see what Go you've ahead. got. You bet, Commander. Let's see what you got. I'm looking for some new armor, even though I just picked up some new armor. What do you got? Oh, wait a minute. Let's compare that. Nope, the stiletto's still superior. Ooh, scorpion. It looks like it's better than my onyx. Substantially. Oh, it's gonna leave us broke, but that's okay. Go big or go home, right? Or maybe not. I don't know. Uh. Okay, well, something's going wrong and it won't let me buy it, so I'm not gonna trip. Maybe it's fate telling me, don't pick it up yet. Or maybe it's just a simple glitch. Who knows? This place still scares the shit out of me. Look at this. Like, in, okay, let's be realistic. In real life, if you came into a room and you seen this, wouldn't you be terrified that you were going to die? That something was going to happen? Like, I feel like if I drop a quarter right now and it gets sucked in their machine, it's over for everybody. It's a wrap. What's up, Adam? Something I can do for you, Commander. Make sure you don't drop no quarters, that's all. No, I asked you all this stuff before. Let me Carry go talk on, to uh, the other cutest member of this team as far as vocals. Oh, hello, Shepard. Oh, why are you so upset? You said, oh, it's, oh, oh my God. I'm trying to stick to something. Stick with Liara because she is so cute vocally. Are you okay? Tally is. I don't know. I don't know. Your Aww. ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving, and the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? How do I sleep at night and with all the quiet? Uh... The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing I, you want I to hear I know what she silence. means, though, because... It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Mm. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here... I kind of miss them. I know what she means. When I grew up, I grew up in Southeast Detroit. Hit y'all with an anecdote real quick. And uh, it's loud, noisy, polluted, whatever. All the good stuff for urban city life. Uh, you know, gunshots at night, blah, blah, blah. And then when I graduated high school and went straight to college, I had so much trouble sleeping my first couple weeks because it was so peaceful. It was on the other side of Michigan. It's quiet, and I, so I, I get, I get what she, I get what she means. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have until it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. Ians in the flotilla. And each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, 
We have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. Damn. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. Huh. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. Okay. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So, you so like the Obama. ultimate power <laughs> rests with elected officials. In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Interesting. Tell me about the Geth who kicked y'all ass and kicked y'all off your own planet. <laughs> I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their slaves. intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks. So you fucked up. Bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. Mm -hmm. How come the council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. I bet. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of like the neural Skynet. network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. Fucked up. So, the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. Interesting. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. So it's like RAM. What made them rebel? As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. Hmm. I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. 
The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. <laughs> the general order went out across all quarian controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. Mm -hmm. The Geth responded to this order violently. So in the words of the great Steve Rogers, Captain America, what y'all did was try to stop a war before it started. And innocent people died. Damn it. You can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end or the war before just it began. Or you could have subverted a war the at all. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. It's hard to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. True. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? Uh, I disagree. They didn't kill Saren. What does that tell you? The Geth are not innocent victims in all this. Are you sure? They're the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All organic life. That's why they've joined up with Saren. And that's why we have to stop him. You... Goodbye. I should go. See you later. Okay, the purpose of this episode was sort of an info dump episode so I could um, basically get some more information on each character for everybody who's watching Looking who for doesn't supplies? necessarily know these characters inside out. Let's see what you've got. And back, the plot to this game inside out. And, uh... I'm doing my best to not make decisions based on previous knowledge that I already have, which is virtually impossible. But, uh, like that conversation that I just had with Tally. I know, oh, this looks, oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. That look all right. That looks okay. I dig that. I'm about to put Liara in my old shit, but whatever. Um,. Like I was saying, the purpose is to, you know, check everybody out and see. And I know for a fact that the Geth, uh, well, the real Geth, not the heretics as they're called, um, are not bloodthirsty or uh, anti-organic. Anti, uh, they really just want to live in peace. And uh, during that conversation with Tali just then, I kind of uh, used that prior knowledge and I would like to take that back it's too late now but I used that prior knowledge in the dialogue options and that's that's not fair so I'll try to cut uh, watch that yes commander uh, nothing carry frankly. on Presley yes sir Pre I, I assure you Presley doesn't have very much interest in this say so let's go holler at Joker. And uh, then we're going ahead and make our way to go kick some gif ass. And not <laughs> the heretics. There we go. Hey, Commander, next time we touch down, let's try not to park the ship in a colony of mutant zombies. Just thinking out loud here. <laughs> okay, so he has nothing new to say. I have for that. to go. All right, see you. So I'm gonna have to stop, start uh, stopping in on Joker more often, cause his dialogue is always funny. What do you expect from Seth? So 
All right, let's figure out where we're gonna Good go. Good timing, Commander. We got a transmission coming in from the Citadel. Oh. Top priority clearance. And who's it from? Is it the ambassador? It's not his signature. I think it's from the council. I'll patch it through to the comrade. The council? He wants to talk to moi? Okay, let's see what the council wants. And then we'll see if we're gonna go ahead and start making our way uh, toward Commander the Shepherd, game. Oh, that's creepy. Oh, God. That may be critical to your mission against Saren. Whew, wait a minute, let me just take a breath for a second, because your uh, hologram is scary as shit. I'll take all the help I can get. We've received an urgent message from one of our infiltration agents in the though? Traverse. You mean spies? Spectres tend to attract attention, Commander. <sighs> but they are only one arm of the Council. Special task groups are often a better option for monitoring developing situations. We currently have several infiltration units scattered throughout the border regions of Citadel space. This particular unit was gathering intel on Saren. What did they find? Unfortunately, the message we received was little more than static. The infiltration team must be in a situation where they can't set up proper interstellar communications. But the message was sent on a channel reserved for mission critical communications. Whatever they were trying to tell us, we know it was important. Considering your interest in Saren, we thought you might want to investigate this. Find out what happened to our team. The signal originated from the planet Vermeer. I'll look into it. The Council prefers not to become involved in the specifics of Spectre activities. We only want you to be aware of all your options, including Vermeer. Good luck, Commander Shepard. We will keep you advised if we learn anything else. <sighs> Scary. Vermeer. So that's a new point of interest. We'll hit that last because we already had another one. I think it's uh, Noveria. So let's make our way there first. And then we'll get funky on Vermeer. Give us an excuse to test out this new armor. Alright, so there's Vermeer where they just said the new place. And no barrier was the old spot. I believe, yeah. That'll never stop being cool, no matter what. Commander, urgent message from Alliance Command coming in. I'll patch it through. Shepard, <sighs> this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. Nice. We've got a situation here, and you're the only one that can handle it. Why? Okay, what's wrong? What do you need, Admiral? Damn it! There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Oh, sh shit. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware, and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI Corps and manually disable it. Can't you disable it remotely? Our fail-safes aren't responding. The VI operates on a closed network. It can affect any external systems, but we don't have any direct access to its processes. We could bomb it from orbit, but the damage to the facility would be catastrophic. We'd prefer to have someone shut down the core. Someone like you. I know Spectre's answered the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facilities, weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Ah, <sighs> fabulous. Of course, of course, of course. Of course, right, when I decide to do some shit is when it's gonna jump off, right? Let me look at my journal. 
Okay, so the Rogue VI, that is an assignment. We're not going to do that right now. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, Novaria to, re uh, investigate the reports of the GIF. Okay, because that's a side mission, and uh, so there. Uh huh. Damn it. Damn it, beautiful, wonderful RPG. Confusing the shit out of me, making me want to do stuff. I hate that I love these games. <laughs> but that's RPG magic. It'll, right when you get ready to say, you know, I'm about to stick to the story. Approach control, this is the SSV Normandy, requesting a vector and a birth. That's when the side quest comes in. Normandy, arrival is not scheduled. Our defense grid is armed and tracking you. State your business. Citadel business. We got a council specter aboard. Landing access granted, Normandy. Be advised, we will be confirming identification on arrival. If confirmation cannot be established, your vessel will be impounded. Mm. What a fun bunch. I think I'll take my next leave here. <laughs> uh, I was thinking the same thing, Joker. Alright, so... Who should I take with me? I've taken Rex with me everywhere but I think it's time to switch that up or do I leave Liara yeah I'll leave Lee Li I'll leave my girlfriend and I'll take Tally let's get out a shot let's see what happens Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. That's right. Okay, so basically what I am going to do is I am going to make it to where everything is going to begin to jump off. And then I'll end this episode. And then at the beginning of the next episode, we'll get deep into it. And uh, figure out what the hell's going on and everything. Because um, this episode was basically an info dump episode to get us going. Um, so I actually stopped right here in front of them because they're going to start some dialogue with us. And uh, thank you guys for sticking with me. Like, subscribe, um, comment, please. Let me know what I can do to make things better. And as always, keep it funky. And later, my ninjas.